But first, we continue with our deep dive into the Hunter Biden hard drive story that the rest of the media either ignores or tries to actually censor and keep you from hearing. But here on KABC, there's no one censoring us. This is a huge story. You should be very concerned about it. And if you're a Democrat and you support Joe Biden, you should be concerned about it because it's not going away. It's going to harm his presidency should he be elected. And it also makes him incredibly vulnerable to our fiercest adversaries overseas. What more is there developing in this story and what can be corroborated? Let's bring in someone who can actually answer those questions, not someone who can speculate about it. Seamus Bruner is an associate director of research at the Government Accountability Institute. He is the author of the book Compromised, How Money and Politics Drive FBI Corruption. And for the purposes of this conversation, Seamus, so everybody knows, Government Accountability Institute is the uh, shop that Peter Schweitzer runs. Peter Schweitzer uh, and your organization, Seamus, you have obtained some very important corroborating evidence in this case, have you not? Yeah, that's right, Larry. Thanks for having me on. You bet. It's, uh, we, got, we got access to one of Hunter Biden and uh, Devin Archer's business partners. It's a man named Bevin Cooney. Uh, he has defected from Biden, Inc., and he's given us access. Now, it's not a hard drive. It's not a laptop. It's not a hack. He's given us login credentials access to his personal Gmail inbox, which contains 26,000 emails, and we've been sorting through them over the past 10 days, and really a shocking pattern has emerged. It's Hunter Biden getting uh, all of these deals. His name is throughout these emails, and there's just all this talk of how do we leverage Hunter Biden. There's countless emails about China, uh, emails about Kazakhstan, emails about Russia, the millions coming in from the wife of the mayor of Moscow. And basically these emails confirm what we all knew all along, Larry, this is not a Hunter Biden scandal. This is absolutely a Joe Biden scandal. Well, let's let's flesh that out a bit, Seamus, because uh, these uh, businesses, and let's just be clear, what is this firm that he worked for? Is this a lobbying firm, a consulting firm? And the reason this is important, as you know, Seamus, the laws are very explicit in terms of whether you're a lobbyist or a consultant or an attorney advising either local uh, interests that have uh, dealings with the government or foreign interests that are dealing with the government. So, so do you know specifically what this firm did, what they're, what, how they were defined? Right. So that's a great, it's a great question, and and I'll get to the FARA concerns in a in a second. But uh, the, these uh, business partners of Hunter Biden, Devin Archer, Bevin Cooney, a man named Jason Galanis, they were all involved in this tribal bond scheme that, that some of your listeners may have heard of that, that sent Bevin Cooney and Jason Galanis to prison. It resulted in the arrest of Devin Archer. The short answer to your question is there's probably 15 different firms that they swap out their board position on. And there, there's really, I mean, they're kind of like these no-name uh, entities that they're trying to roll up into a bigger uh, investment house. And so there's, there's Burnham Asset Management, which Hunter Biden was uh, on the board and executive at. There's, uh, um, there's a thing called Wealth Assurance. I mean, there's a whole host of companies, okay. and they're, they're kind of trying to juice them up, pump them up, so that they can either dump them to another investor, in some cases foreign businesses, and uh, in other okay. cases, they're trying to roll it up into a big investment house. Now, in the case of leveraging Hunter Biden's name and and who, he, what is explicit in these emails in terms of how that uh, how that actually happens? How he's leveraged? Is it just a question of well, Hunter's part of this because he's the vice president's son? That just gives us some cachet. It gets us in the door. Or is there something explicitly there where Hunter's going to make introductions or maybe make recommendations to his father? You know, over Sunday dinner. Well, it's, it's definitely uh, the former, and also there, are, there is evidence of the latter. Uh, you know, these guys are, uh, you know, smart enough not to put the explicit, you know, we've got a satchel of cash re ready for Joe Biden's uh, to, to take control of here. So it's not explicit quid pro quos, but what you see is this, this pattern of uh, the direct, the words they use directly, it's a shocking pattern, really. They viewed Hunter Biden and his relationships as, quote, currency, uh, specifically because the direct pipeline to the Obama-Biden administration. That's a quote, direct pipeline to the administration. And so they, they use that in all of their, uh, you know, investor pitches to line up business deals with these foreign, foreign oligarchs, these foreign governments. 
Um, here, I'll just read you a few of the, the more direct Please. quotes. Please do. Um, so in a November 2014 email, Biden's associates sought to emphasize their connections to the White House, specifically Vice President Joe Biden. Quote, I wanted to focus on our other currency, what we are bringing to the table, the direct administration pipeline. And in that same email, uh, they, they say maybe we should uh, drop Joe Biden's name here and maybe we should, quote, remind of HB's dad's union relationships. Now, they're, they're talking about a pitch to union pension funds. Mm. So maybe we should remind these guys that we've got Hunter Biden's union relationships to justify the ask. Gotcha. Um, in, in some other emails, Archer, Devin Archer explains, I want to bring Hunter Biden into the mix on this deal. There's, there's probably 37, 50 deals going on that they're trying to line up, and some go through, some don't. And so Archer says, I want to bring Hunter into the mix because Hunter is, quote, willing to take on more risk. And in that same email, he's contrasting Hunter's willingness to, you know, trade on his name to that of Chris Hines, the son of stepson of Secretary of State John Kerry, who Archer called much more risk averse. Uh, Archer says, so we want to leverage Hunter more. Um, and, and by and the way, it, it, of course, uh, uh, Mr. Hines famously backed out of the Burisma deal for just that reason. He said, yeah, it, it didn't smell exactly. right to him, if I remember right. Yeah, Exa Exactly right. It's, it's, it's shortly after these emails that, uh, that Chris Hines backs out and wants to pull his name off of everything, which is interesting because the entire kind of umbrella – uh, organization entity for all these deals is an entity called Rosemont Seneca Partners. That Rosemont name is the name of the Biden's family farm uh, outside Philly, uh, Pennsylvania. Oh wow! Um, so the Rosemont name is a Heinz family name. They're they're using it in all of their deals, and and Chris Heinz gets spooked and very wisely says, "I want nothing to do with this anymore. You guys are dealing with." Uh, Russian oligarchs and Kazakh oligarchs and Ukrainian oligarchs and right. even uh, Chinese Communist Party members. Okay, and we're speaking with Seamus Bruner. He is an uh, associate director of research over the Government Accountability Institute. And as he uh, laid out here, they have access now to many of the emails involving Hunter Biden and his activities while his father was vice president. And by the way, uh, many of these emails, uh, Seamus, you tell me, uh, uh, Hunter is copied on or drafted or was the recipient. So these then offer corroboration directly, like our exact copies or, ex or exact uh, 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 references directly to emails that appear on this hard drive, correct? Yes, uh, yes, that's, that's right. The, the first drop from the New York Post had a guy named Vadim Pojarski, who is an executive at Burisma, who, according to the New York Post and the emails they, uh, they obtained, uh, got a meeting with Vice President Joe Biden. Vadim Pojarski is in these emails. Several other uh, Burisma executives are in these emails. Um, now, now, to be clear, Bevin Cooney was not um, as, as close with Hunter Biden as Devin Archer was. So, so Devin Archer really manages the relationship, and the most emails with Hunter Biden's name on them are really forwards from Devin Archer to the crew of uh, the guys involved in the tribal bond scheme. Right. And, and it is clear that Archer is, you know, kind of like Chris Hines, wanting to keep Hunter Biden's fingerprints off of it, because the, the business partners will say something like, we should, uh, we should use uh, Hunter Biden in our pitch. And he says, I, I don't know if that's necessary, or, you know, says, let's talk on the phone. So they are aware that, you know, we shouldn't be putting this in an email but at the same time, they, they do slip up, and uh, we've found at least dozens of examples that really corroborate the claim that Joe, this is really not a Hunter Biden scandal. This is about getting access to Joe Biden, getting White House meetings. They get a, uh, a White House meeting in a matter of days. It would take us weeks, if, if at all, yes. for a group of Chinese businessmen who are worth, according to uh, you know, media reports, this group of Chinese businessmen called the China Entrepreneurs Club, their, their valuation is worth 4% of China's D GDP. So these are not one billionaires or five billionaires. These are tens of billionaires, Jack, Jack Ma of Alibaba. They reach out and they get in touch with Hunter Biden's business partners, say, can you make a White House meeting happen? Uh, I want to talk to Hunter about that. Hunter's name is invoked several times. And uh, two days later, Devin Archer says, we got them the meeting, and they sure enough did get the meeting. It did not appear on Joe Biden's official schedule, um, but the names did appear in the White House visitor logs, 
It was not reported at all, but we were able to track down a blog post from one of the members from the Chinese delegation, which, by the way, includes members of the Chinese Communist Party, like high-ranking members, uh, and they say that they got the meeting with Joe Biden. So it was this kind of a secret meeting off the books lined up by Hunter Biden and his business partners. Uh, Seamus Bruner, is there any indication, because we're hearing from Adam Schiff and we're hearing from all these former intelligence community officials who have written an open letter, et cetera, et cetera. It's the same old game. And they're saying, you know, this has all the markings of Russian disinformation. Uh, I got a couple of questions in that regard. First of all, is there any evidence that this is Russian disinformation from your perspective, which you've been able to see, especially since you have a completely separate uh, cache of emails. In fact, you don't even have, it's not a hack, as you said, it's not a, a hard drive that's been handed over. You got access to just sign on and check out all the emails, right? Exactly. No, uh, this is just more projection from Adam Schiff, who has his own uh, connections and in, in donors in the former Soviet Union, and uh, it's really par for the course. It's absolutely not Russian disinformation. Bevin okay. Cooney is a finance guy from Chicago. He gave us written authorization uh, we've got a letter from him through his attorney okay. saying you can access my account. And there's absolutely no way to spoof any of these emails that go all the way back to 2009. Um, it would be just the most sophisticated. I mean, it's, it's really literally yeah, impossible. It, it, it defies this cred made credulity, up. which, by the way, leads me to the second question. It's really, I mean, listen, you're a researcher on this stuff, and you, 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 you guys at Peter Schweizer's shop is great at connecting these dots and really diving deep. But just from a pure political standpoint here, Seamus, if this is written off as Russian disinformation and a propaganda ploy from the Kremlin, um, implied in that defense, Seamus, is that were it real, were it genuine, it would be a major scandal, right? Because why would Putin's people risk all of this and put together this hugely elaborate propaganda disinformation plan if it wasn't going to show major corruption and illegal behavior, right? They, it, they wouldn't do it for just a nothing burger. So in a way, Schiff and all these other people saying, oh, it's Russian disinformation, they're conceding the point that if, in fact, this is genuine information, it is a major, major corruption scandal, is it not? That's absolutely right, Larry. It's, uh, I mean, it's, it's really desperation. The, the Russia collusion trope is, is, is desperation because... Right. I mean, it's kind of like the it, – it's, it's really uh, interesting. This, this whole – all of these hard drives and these emails all coming out and the response from the mainstream media and Democrats like Schiff is calling it Russian disinformation. It's kind of analogous to the Steele dossier because the Biden which, campaign – Which, by the way, was Russian disinformation paid for it, by it, Hillary no, it, Clinton. Exactly <laughs> right, because these emails show Russian oligarchs with very close ties to Putin funneling money to Biden, Inc. So yeah. it's – I mean, it's the exact same thing, and, and the, the denial is kind of, and you know the Facebook and the tech uh, you know, censorship of this story, they censored it because they, it was first claimed to be Russian disinformation, and then the Biden campaign goes and cites the censorship as proof that the story has been debunked. So it's right. just like the Steele dossier, they're citing, each, you know, citing themselves in a kind of a circuitous route, right. uh, just like the Steele dossier got FISA warrants. It's 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 their playbook uh, run but all the, over again. But the one thing the Biden campaign and the Bidens themselves have not said is that this these are fake emails that there's uh, that there's, all they've said is it's a smear. Smear is a very interesting word to use. We'll set that aside for a moment. Uh, Seamus Bruner, let's get to the illegality here. Um, I guess the real question is: We know that Hunter Biden enriched himself off of these deals. Is there any evidence showing how Joe Biden directly benefited from these deals financially? And secondly, is there any evidence to show that uh, Biden, Joe Biden, as vice president, either modified what he would have done already uh, with regard to American policies, or or uh, took meetings, did things outside of the norm? to accommodate these arrangements? I think those, those are the two real questions in terms of criminal behavior. Did you benefit directly from them, and did you actually do something you normally wouldn't have done, right? Right, right. So it's, it's, it's a little more complicated than that. I will, I'll say that you know, it's not explicit. They're, they're smart enough not to put the explicit quid pro quo in there to, to Joe. Um, they do reference Biden uh, you know, making an ask of them, uh, they said that Biden wants us to pay lip service, and in the same uh, paragraph, say Hunter agrees. So it's clear that that's So Biden Joe is Biden not. asked his son's lobbying firm or, or consulting firm, whatever you want to call it, to actually work on his behalf? 
A Biden. Uh, I oh. w- I want to be careful not saying it, it appears that it is Joe Biden. They, okay, they're but it could have been Joe's brother, Hunter's uncle, right? Okay, right, okay. right. There's a, there's a lot of Bidens cashing in now. What I'll say is the power of these emails is really that they corroborate. You know, they're not direct like the Hunter Biden emails are directly to Hunter Biden. So everything is relevant to Hunter Biden and anything referencing Joe is extremely relevant in those emails. What these do is they really corroborate the the deals going on, the backstory, um, the money that was flowing to Hunter from the foreign interest. And you and you got to wonder because you see about six years of deal making going on with some of the shadiest characters around, like this uh, Russian oligarch and a couple Kazakh oligarchs. These people, you know, these billionaires in Russia and Kazakhstan, they don't keep paying you money uh, if you're if you're not delivering. And, That's and the right. question they, is, they what, don't do it out of they, the kindness of their hearts. Oh, let's hunt, help Hunter Biden out. He's at a rough time of it. Hell no, they expect something it, in return. Exactly, and the sums are just absolutely massive. I mean, we thought the speaking fees to the Clintons were huge. Hunter Biden is making more. Uh, you know, more from Burisma than a, than a handful of Clinton speeches. Wow. Boy, so you it's, talk it's, about privilege, too, where, where if he were anyone else's son, he'd probably face criminal jail time for his behaviors and everything that he was caught doing, and yet somehow he skates and gets millions of dollars. Seamus, we've got to leave it there, but we'll have you back. This story is continuing to develop. You guys over at Government Accountability Institute are continuing to do great research on it, and as things develop, please come back here, okay? Yes, sir. Thank you, Larry. You bet. That's Seamus Bruner, Government Accountability Institute, and also his book is Compromised, How Money and Politics Drive FBI Corruption. It's Larry O'Connor.